Good day, and thank you for joining us for another edition of Conversations with AARP in the Virgin Islands. I'm Troy Deshabir Schuster, your host and state director for AARP in this territory. In this episode, we're going to focus our discussion on the electoral process in the Virgin Islands. At AARP, we believe that the right to vote is not just a privilege, but a fundamental right and a duty to protect our democracy. In recent years, many states and territories, especially since the 2020 elections, have revised their voting laws. AARP has been at the forefront advocating to ensure these changes do not impose unnecessary burdens on voters, particularly those 50 and older and their families. As we approach the 2024 elections, AARP remains committed to safeguarding access to the ballot, especially for the older voters as they represent more than 50% of the total voter turnout. In fact, a recent poll of voter populations across the nation found that voters aged 50 and older will be the group that decides the control of their legislative halls in the 2024 election. The same is true in the Virgin Islands. Today's show is dedicated to ensuring that every Virgin Islander's right to vote is not only protected, but also empowered with all the necessary resources and information to make informed decisions in the upcoming 2024 election cycle. Joining us today is Terrell Alexander, Deputy Supervisor of Election Systems of the Virgin Islands in the St. Croix District. And so we welcome Terrell. How are you? Uh, thanks, Trey. How are you doing? Doing great, doing great. Thank you for joining us again. It's always uh, a pleasure having you on the show and so very important for you representing the election system of the Virgin Islands to engage in this conversation with us to let our audience know the importance of voting and, and how it all works and that it is, in fact, safe. So, first of all, tell us what you do in the election system of the Virgin Islands. Uh, well, thank you for the invitation. We always, uh, we always look forward to partnering with AARP. They're, you're one of our top partners with the election system. So again, my name is Terrell Alexandria. I'm the Deputy Supervisor of Elections in the St. Croix District. So anything elections, I deal with in St. Croix. We do voter registration, campaign finances, nomination, the nomination process, and we do educations at schools. Um, I could sit here and give you a whole long explanation, uh, explanation of what we do. Uh, but I would rather do it during the show. Okay, great, great, great. And so the right to vote is a fundamental human right. Can you shed some light on why voting is such a critical component of our democracy? So first of all, um, our forefathers died for that, this right to vote. There was years prior where you had to pay a, a tax to, to, to vote and you had to be a specific skin color to vote. Um, and now it's, you do, the requirements are so simple. You just have to be 18 years of age. Um, it's, and it's a way how we choose our, our leaders um, in our community. Um, so it, it's something that we always encourage somebody to do. Whether you, you, don't, you, don't like, you don't support a candidate, we still always encourage you to come out to vote because um, it, it is your right to do. Um, so we, are, we always ask you to exercise that right. And not only is it a right, but as I said in the opening to this show, I believe it's also a duty. Correct. You know, I mean, it, it, with, ev with every right comes a duty. Correct. It's like two sides of the same coin. And, and, and we must come out and vote. We must protect our democracy through our, our vote. We must de help to determine our destiny through our Correct. vote. You know, we all have great control over our destiny, both our personal destiny and the destiny of the community in which we live. And the way we affect that destiny in, of the community in which we live is by voting. voting. Uh, there's, there's this old status. Well, I don't know where this saying comes from, but there's a saying that, that if you don't vote, you can't complain. Um, so if you don't vote, don't complain. You exercise your right to vote. Um, you you, li you listen to what your the potential candidates are informing you. Listen to see what what their stating makes sense, or if you disagree, you could share your opinion. Uh, but at the end of the day, like you said, it's your duty to come out to vote. Um, if you're if you're dissatisfied with the candidates, you can also become a candidate. Uh, I just listen to what the individuals in the community are speaking about, and I bring up a plan to to address those concerns. Um, so it, it's it doesn't it's not just one person; it's a community effort. 
uh, but your one vote is a very much important vote. And as we mentioned earlier, some people say, well, I don't like any of the candidates. I'm not going to vote. But as you listen to the candidates, at the end of the day, you must, you must be able to choose one that you have some sort of agreement with. Correct. Some candidate that you agree with more than with the and other the, candidate, the, right? <laughs> uh, uh, and we always tell individuals, it's, it's also your right to, to vote a blank ballot. Uh, if you're this, you're, I don't know how, well, I don't know how you could be dissatisfied with every single candidate on the, on the ballot. Um, but if it's your choice, you can vote a blank ballot. You can also write in somebody who you believe would make a suitable candidate, because that's something that individuals do look at at the end of the election to see who write in somebody. Because you may potentially want somebody to run, and they may not, they may not, that person may not be confident in itself and see, okay, well, if I get there's ten people who wrote me in the past election, um, and I didn't campaign for those votes, so if I put my name on the ballot, well, let's see what can happen. So we always encourage individuals: you want you can cast a blank ballot. Or two, you could write in an individual who you believe is suitable. Um, like I know, for example, in here in our in our agency, um, the board of elections, we had a member who died, may his soul rest in peace, um, during his term, and the person who replaced him won by one vote. Um, so it, it does, it may not have an immediate effect, but there is a long-term effect on it um, to fill a, to fill a need. So it it's your again, it's your right to do. And in recent years, we have been hearing not only in the Virgin Islands, but even on the on the national level, um, a lot of mistrust of the system and saying that votes aren't being counted, that it's corrupt, et cetera, uh, which is really very damaging. It's it unfortunate that people are saying that because it, it erodes our democracy at its very foundation, right? And I'm sure that nobody wants to live under an autocracy or, you know, a dictatorship. So we should really not be undermining our election system, whether Correct. it's on the territorial or on the state level or on the national level. Um, so keeping that in mind, how does the election system of the Virgin Islands ensure that every vote is counted and every voice is heard? Um, simple. Um, so, and that's something I'm so happy that you brought up that 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 point. Um, every voter before they they they're able to cast a ballot, they they they're able to review the selections they made on the the paper ballot, or if they use a ballot device in um, device a ballot marking device machine, regardless of whichever one, you still have an opportunity to review it um, before you cast your ballot. Bef then, once you're finished with your selections. And you go to the, the tabulator machine, you insert it. Once you insert that, that ballot into the machine, the machine is going to prompt you and tell you um, whether you undervote or overvote. Once you do, if that's what you determine to do, um, you just simply hit cast your ballot. And at the end of the process, it tells you thank you for voting. Um, your vote would be counted. There is there is various mechanism within the, 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 the machines that shows you that your vote was counted. One, there is a, a, a running counter on the top of the machine. So if you inserted a ballot and you're, before you insert your ballot, there was 20, and before you leave, it's going to be 21. Um, and just the, the idea that the, the process is not safe is very silly because the amount of individuals that will have to be involved in the entire process, um, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, and we always tell, encourage anybody before you cast your ballot, if you do not feel if you don't feel safe in doing so, ask a question. Because once you cast a ballot, there is nothing that we can do. And um, you can always come into the office just to learn about the machines, about the voting process. Um, the testing of machines is open for any individual to come in. Um, and it's jumping just having a conversation. You can always reach us at the office. Our St. Croix office is uh, 340-773-1021. Our St. Thomas office is 774-3107. And just, have, just want to ask a question. All you have to do is ask a question. Never feel the need that you have to, to cast a ballot. Um, we don't pressure you in voting. It's your right to, to vote. Um, whenever you feel comfortable in voting, that's your choice to make. Perfect. And tell us, how does somebody become eligible to vote? So, that, so we have this running joke in the entire government. It's the simplest process. The simplest agency you ever have to deal with when you're dealing with government 
uh, a government agency. The entire process takes you no more than 15 minutes. And 15 minutes, you're more talking to the, the person that assists you in registering to vote than the entire process. Uh, it's very simple. All you need to be is a register. All you need to be is an 18 years of age, um, an American citizen, and you only need to work with proof of um, U.S. citizen by your U.S. birth certificate, your U.S. passport, a naturalization cert, DD-214. Um, we do not accept copies of any of those documents, and the passport cannot be expired. Um, and at the end of the process, we give you a cool ID um, that, sh that you can utilize to when you go to vote. Now, again, you don't need an ID to, to vote, but it just helps check helps the check-in process to make it smoother because there are instances where um, I may be a twin, um, and the only difference between my name and my twin might be I may be Jarrell, and I may I'm, I may be Jarrell, and my twin name may be Terrell. Um, that person checks in, and then Jarrell's get picked, but it's actually Terrell. Um, so it just helps smooth the, the check-in process. Uh, again, it's a very simple process: birth certificate, U.S. passport, naturalization cert, DD-214. Our office hours are Monday to Friday, 8:30 to 4:30 a.m. The Senjan the Senjan office is open Tuesdays and Thursdays only uh, but in the election year it's open more frequently uh, but it's the simplest process you ever do with dealing with government and once somebody becomes eligible to vote once they become a registered voter um is there an expiration on that do they ever need to renew that? no the only sorry the only way you can lose your voting right is if you ever been convicted of a crime or if you die, or if you so choose to cancel your voter registration to move to a diff different jurisdiction, that's my hope. That's the only reason why you'll be canceling your voter registration. I hope that your, your voter registration remains with us for the rest of your life. And um, once you're registered to vote, you're registered to vote for life, um, unless you die and get convicted of a crime. But once you serve out your time, um, you're you're instantly um, placed back on the records. So then you could always cast your ballot. But you're registered for life. Okay, that's that's good to know. Um, but I, if, if I, I may, um, so th there is, we recently had a law passed in 2020 where we place um, voters inactive. Um, and the only way we're going to place you inactive is here if you don't vote in two consecutive general elections. Um, but once you're continuously voting, you're always going to remain active. Even though you're an inactive voter, you're still a registered voter. Um, but you just, before you, prior to voting an early vote on election day, you just have to fill out a simple form. It's going to ask you your physical address and your mailing address. You sign it and you date it, and you're you immediately allowed to vote. And that process takes no more than two minutes. Um, so we're just encouraging individuals always go out to vote so we never have to place you inactive. I think currently, territorially wide, we have over 25 individuals um, inactive. Uh, and we hope every month, well, in the past couple of months, those numbers have been going down. But again, we are in an election year. And you always see those, the, most of the individuals as inactive is usually between that 18 to, to 20, 29 group. Or we, we suspect some of those are individuals that um, they moved to a different country they um, and then they died, or they just have individuals who moved to the United States and just never informed us that they actually uh, moved. So they're still on our, our records. And if somebody becomes inactive, uh, do you notify them? How do they yes. know that they're inactive? Yeah. So prior to, prior to us making you inactive, we have to send you a letter, and that's that's the issue um, we, that we have. Um, we have individuals who may register to vote at 18 years old, never come back to the office to update their information, um, so that they may have a PO box from when they're 18. Now they're 40 years old. Um, they have moved to several locations and in the, within the island. Um, but never updated it. So we're going to send you a mail. And have, as of recent, we have been collecting email addresses. So if you do have an email address, you can provide us your email address um, so we could have that information on file so we could actually email you. But what's interesting about the, the emailing part, we have sent out emails to, to voters. Nobody responds to it. We send out an actual letter. We get the, the mass of the individuals coming to the office. Um, but just we just always just say, just, just update your information as you move. Um, so we could have up-to-date information. So when we send you the notice, um, you can get it. The notice is on our website, vivote.gov. You can find it in our offices. And there's the various um, government agencies that we have the list in posted to see that you're inactive. And we do thank our media partners who do um, share the article whenever we send out a press release. We'll create an article when we send out the press release. 
Okay, very good. I'm, I'm glad that people are, are notified. I was wondering about that, if they would show up to vote and yeah. then suddenly discover that they're inactive. But what if that happens, though? Let's say, let's say they, they missed the notice, they overlooked it. So, when you, so either if you come to early vote or you go to on election day, um, you will still be allowed to vote. The, mach, the, 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 the poll worker will notify that you're inactive. Um, the poll worker will give you a form to complete. The poll worker then call the office. The office would make you active, and then you'll be allowed to vote. Um, so it, it doesn't disenfranchise you from voting. You'll always be allowed to vote. Uh, it just it just helps with the statistics. Like the last election, we had close to sixty percent of individuals who's registered to vote actually voted. Um, in prior years, we were at twenty percent, thirty percent, because there was just a large individual of. Um, number of individuals that were under rules that just registered to vote to get the ID and they, they did not come back to vote. Um, so the inactive helped to create, to help our statistics um, a bit. So that's something that we're grateful for. In 2020, AARP and the Election System of the Virgin Islands collaborated on several key legislations that provided changes and improvements in the election process. What were the key outcomes of this partnership, especially in terms of enhancing voter access and participation for the 50, 50 plus demographic here in the territory? So that, that is actually a great, a great question. So our we have two our two favorite partners we have is AARP and WTGX, which you guys also work with. Um, so one would be one 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 of this, which is my favorite, would be the removing the requirement for absentee voting. So prior to prior to and I could take it back to 2020, um, where prior to 2020, you had to have a specific reason um, to request an absentee ballot. Now, anybody can request an absentee ballot if they so choose so. Uh, if you want to just get a ballot and say you want to vote from home, um, th that is that was open up for you. Um, there is other different little stuff that, we're, that we have in the works. I don't want to mention it now. And that we're partnering with AARP to, to get done to make sure that everybody is, not only the 50 plus community, uh, any registered voters can come out to do. Um, a lot of information we get is just um, sharing information with our partners because you have done a process. Like for example, you have you done you do outreach. Um, we would like to get to do to do to the same outreach. So the only way I could I could mimic your process is if you share that information. So just having a conversation and I let you know, Miss Tucson is a very good asset of your agency. So if you don't ever let her go to any place else, because um, not saying that you're not and your your entire staff is. I'm um, a very great asset. Um, they're, they're always willing to share, and that's that's the key factor of it. Um, just the sharing information because we want to get better, and I know you want to get better. Um, so we're very grateful for the partnership that you do. Uh, individuals may not understand, and that that goes back to the how secure the process is. There's just so many individuals that's who is in the process that you do not know of. Um, so if if there is something a foul. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure you're going to be like, hey, something is wrong with the election system, so we don't want to partner on it. And year after year, ARP still partners with us. So that just shows our body of work that we do. No, and it's always a pleasure. It's, it's, a, it's a great honor for us at ARP to partner with the election system of the Virgin Islands. It's a very, very important and valuable partnership. And even as we move forward in the very near future, we will be your neighbor, right? Mm -hmm. our, our offices will be neighboring. <laughs> So for our, our audience, I know a lot of you have been looking for the AARP office in St. Croix, and right now we're just in a temporary space, um, which is not widely publicized because we're not always in the office. We're still doing a lot of our work from home. But by the end of this year, we will be located in the heart of Sunny Isle Shopping Center um, on the floor above the election system of the Virgin Islands. So again, we'll be neighbors there. So and, we look uh, forward to welcoming you guys into the building. Yeah. There's going to be a party. That's right. <laughs> there will be, <laughs> will be a party. <laughs> and, and when we need to speak, either you can tap on the ceiling or I can knock on All the right, floor right. right there. Right? You can just jump up on the floor and I could just be hitting the floor um, so you <laughs> could know that it's time for a meeting. Exactly, exactly. But going back to 2020, I'm so very pleased uh, that we're able to, to relax the requirements for for absentee ballots and and that has worked so well not only during the pandemic but even beyond because as our population ages you know as we discussed there are so many people who cannot come out of their home and at least now they can can stay in their home and, and vote and have right. their voice heard so um and we look forward to many other great partnerships and so uh, can you give us an overview of key changes in the election process for this 2024 cycle 
that our viewers should be aware of? What what has changed for this year? Um, so one one I would say would be the the inactive, which we previously discussed on. Um, so there's a next one. I, I, I there there was a recent court ruling that just the legislature was going to be working on. Um, so I like I tell the supervisor Fox. Um, we're going to have a primary on August third, and early voting is going to be July sixteenth to the twenty third of twenty twenty four. Um, that will be the only two factors that we have, and we also are planning to launch. Well, hopefully the goal is to launch an online voter registration um, portal, uh, which ARP has already signed up to be a partner with us. Um, so we're excited about that. So the goal is to hopefully have that online at some point during the election cycle. And with this, with the portal, voters can, one, register to vote, two, re request an absentee ballot, three, make any changes to their voter re registration status. Um, but our, our vendor is currently working on it. I don't have a, a up, most up-to-date, up-to-date from, up up-to-date update from our vendor. Because um, right now we're currently in the nomination process. Today is the last day. Um, it's kind of quite been busy um, the past couple of weeks just with the nomination petition and papers process. And the nomination petition papers and process is a process of how the candidates get on the ballot. Somebody does not just wake up. Well, they can just wake up in the morning and decide that they want to run, uh, but they have to follow the process of going out in the community and obtaining signatures um, from registered voter of their specific party. Uh, or if they're independent, they could get anybody else. And also a next key item that we have on the 2024 general election, but it will be the sixth constitutional convention. Um, today is the last day you can pick up a nomination paper to run for that office. Well, that, that election is in November. The process began um, last month and it ends today, May 21st at by 6 p.m. Um, so if that's something that you were interested in, do I regret to inform you? Um, by the time you're watching this video, that process would probably have ended already. Um, but the, the sixth constitutional election would happen in the November 5th election, general election. Okay. And I saw recently in the news about um, some controversy between the Republican Party and the election system of the Virgin Islands saying that the election system can't regulate um, the primary or something. Can you explain that to us? Because yes, as I was um, the article it was a bit confusing. So it's, it's a quite simple thing. And what what uh, it's 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 what I actually agree to what the the um, what they were stating with. Um, for example, you have your different organization. You have your Lions Club. You have your Rotary Clubs. You have AARP. Um, the governor the, the government does not tell you how that you should meet and when you should meet. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what the law was um, stated, and that's a law for in the books. But our forefathers had a reason for creating the law back when they did it. I don't know the exact time, but I know Title 18 was created in 1963. They have, they have various amendments over time. Um, but it was just that the party was not allowed to meet freely as they, they wanted. It required that um, 30, 30 members. Um, to be on the committee. And usually they don't, the committee never has 30 members. Um, it would be like a script to get right in individuals. And then you have to hope that the person accepts it. Um, so that was the issue that the, the party was not allowed to be meet freely to select their party officers. And then it would, so I wouldn't get it very deep into it, but that, that was the gist of the conversation because everybody will have a different opinion on the matter. But the, the, the idea of the suit was, the party could not have met freely to determine the party offices. Okay, so so when when that's changed, then then it'll be the same for the Democratic Party, the Independent it, it, Movement, it, it, etc. It's the same for every every registered party in the Virgin Islands. Now, a party may adapt their own policy and and determine that hey, we want the election system to do it, um, but that's that would have to be up to the party. Okay. Well, we just have a few more minutes. So tell us again, what is the deadline for registering to vote in this 20, 2024 election? So for the for, for the primary election, the deadline is July 3rd um, to register to vote. That That is a local holiday here in the Virgin Islands. But of course, our offices will be open to ensure individuals that can be registered to vote. For the general election, we have the last city registered to vote is Sunday, October 6th. And of course, we will be open um, to allow individuals to register to vote. And of course, we will be partnering with AARP 
to ensure that every individual is ready to vote, especially specifically the 50 plus community. Um, and we look forward to working, working forward with you guys. Yes, and we're also planning to do some voter machine training and education too. And we appreciate that because, and that's something that we always try to get individuals to do. Don't wait until election day to try and learn the machines. You can learn the machines prior. Um, so that's something uh, you just, it's a simple request. You just send a letter and we don't do uh, voter registration and machine demonstration for candidates. Um, we only do it for civic organization, churches. I'm just sending a simple request. You want a voter registration, make sure you have electricity so we can plug in out our machines and we'll come out and we do the, the voter registration machine demonstration for you. And how can individuals find more information on the election system of the Virgin Islands and on, and on your processes? I'm very disappointed in myself. That was the first thing I should have stated when we started earlier. Any information that you could you need about us, you can find on our website, bivote.gov. This, this website is updated on a daily basis. Any information that's released uh, from our offices, you can find on our website. You can follow us on Facebook, Election Systems of the Virgin Islands. Uh, our, so to get any kind of information or simply you could, if you don't want, if you're not tech savvy, you can always reach out to our offices, St. Croix is 340-773-1021 and then St. Thomas is 774-3107. I will not give out the St. John number uh, because the St. Thomas and St. John office are interconnected. Um, so you, if you need anything, you can always call, if you live in Island of St. Thomas, I mean at St. John, you can always call the St. Thomas office. And you are the deputy supervisor of election system of the Virgin Islands. Is there another deputy uh, like yourself on St. Thomas? Yes, that would be Miss Kiva May Douglas. She's a deputy supervisor for the St. Thomas and John district. Perfect. Perfect. Well, Terrell Alexandre, deputy supervisor election system of the Virgin Islands, thank you so much for joining us today and bringing all of this important information to our listeners and viewers. And and again, at ARP, we always appreciate you and, and the work of the election system. And we look forward to partnering with you in this election cycle and election cycles in the future. Thanks so much. I, thank you very much, Troy. And we look forward to working with you. And I'd like to thank the amazing team of the election system, both board members and staff, for the work that we do on a daily basis. And uh, we may not get the thank you from the public as we would like, but we know that we're doing, we're providing good work on a daily basis because it shows every day we work with ARP and we wish you guys best wishes in the future. Yes, and you all do excellent work. And thank God we don't have the challenges here in the Virgin Islands like we see in some other states around Correct. the country. Correct. So that's a testimony to your good work. <laughs> thank you very much. Great. So have a great day. Okay, you too. Thanks. Okay.